Hello, beer tubers, and welcome to another beer review with me, Peter, the master of hoppets. Today, checking out some more Mexican macro beer that was sent from David in the States. So thanks a ton to David for the beer. Uh, we're pairing this with another tequila, as all the last episodes. Uh, but let's jump into the beer first. So this is a bottle of Cerveceria Moctezuma Dos X Ambar Especial. So it's 4.7%. ABV, and it says here it was brewed and bottled by uh, Moctezuma, so the big, you know, conglomerate brewery, I think it's Heineken owned, uh, in Monterey, Mexico. And then, um, yeah, this is uh, their take on an amber lager. Apparently this was brewed for the arrival of the 20th century. I don't know if this is this specific beer or just Dos Equis in general, but this is a... Uh, well, authentic Mexican cerveza, it says, brewed in the style of Vienna Lager. So Vienna Lager is this slightly more dark malty, as you see here, uh, lager, also called Amber Lager. It's somewhat the similar thing, but the specific thing is used often Vienna malt, uh, which is a specific lager malt. And it says here that besides the amber color, it has a subtle hint of roasted malt. So I'm wondering if they add a touch of roasted barley or something just to give a little bit of character. And the tequila we're gonna be pairing it with is another Reposado, so a youngly aged tequila. So Añejo is the stuff that's aged the longest in barrels. That is 100% agave, it's 40%, and it is called 1800 Reposado. So I think I've seen this here in Denmark, actually, in some like spirit shops and bottle shops and whatnot. And uh, let's see. Brewed under light, oh, okay, so it's a licensed thing produced. This year that is, say underneath though, that is produced and bottled in Mexico. So bottled at origin, okay. So I'm wondering if that is just something to write on stuff like this to let people know that it is uh, authentically produced. Because I know with a lot of things, especially in the wine world, um, I love the wooden cap too. In the wine world, it's a big thing to, you know, have wine shipped and bottled at, you know, big market grocers and whatnot, and then like supermarket chains and whatnot, and they make their own kind of like branded wine. Uh, so they just basically buy it pre-shipped. That was a lot. <laughs> I'm used to sharing these and now I'm just pouring it randomly. So we'll see how this one is. Um, because the um, Reposado Patron was really good. And I'm really looking forward to the other one the Añejo one, I can't remember the name of it, but apparently that's quite smoky, kind of like mezcal, and I love that. So let's check this beer out first. So Dos Equi Amber, it looks like an amber lager, that's for sure. It's a lightly amber hue, um, copper. It's got a white head, actually a very nice head for a macro beer that, you know, often these beers, the heads fizz away really quickly, but you can actually generate some that sticks around and a lot of carbonation too. Let's take out the aroma. Okay, that's not half bad. Uh, toffee, slightly caramelly, no trace of hops really. There is a touch of a light kind of cardboardy thing, but I think the head also looks a little bit grayish. But when was this bottle? So I, I'm guessing it's best before August next, no, this year. So it's probably from August last year. Cause usually with these macro beers, they give it a year, but it smells pretty, you know, pretty straightforward macro brew, like Vienna Lager, Amber Lager. I usually like Vienna Lagers with a touch more hoppiness, but it smells fairly authentic. Like, it's just like this caramelly toffee, maybe toasty, nutty aroma. It does not smell half bad. Hmm, let's try it. Cheers. Thanks a ton, David. <laughs> it tastes a bit like Vidul. <laughs> so that's, okay, it really tastes macro. Really tastes macro. The aroma was much more inviting. But it's, a, it's not a terrible macro either. I think so far this and the um, Tecate, tecate might have been the best that he sent. It is lightly cardboardy. It has like a sugary sweet thing that reminds me of Danish Vidul. And the Danish Vidul is like a low strength, low alcohol lager beer. It's like 1%, 1.2, max 2%, something like that. And you often add like caramel, or candy sugar, or you know things of that, that nature to back sweeten it. So it has like a sweeter profile with breadiness, and I'm getting that here. 
it, it, but just with American kind of necro vibes, like super thin and light bodied, dry, and with this weird sugary, like it's almost like, it tastes more like you add caramel coloring or something than using like caramel malts in this. But it's not like atrocious. Like I drink this if I was offered a bottle at a party or something. It would be something where I'd be like, wow, can, can I have another? But it is what it is. But let's try and jump over to the 1800 Repos Reposado here. So it's been really fun checking out these tequilas because tequila has never been a big thing that I've, you know, been into or anything. I've always enjoyed, you know, tequila if it's good. But I've never done big research. And like the big thing with a lot of people in tequila, what they know is Sierra, which is crap. But yeah, it looks nice. It's a slight golden hue, suggesting it's been aged in oak, but you never know. That could also be caramel color, like in this one. It depends on who makes it and whatnot. But usually these 100% agave tequilas are more properly made. But yeah, it looks like there's nice curtains on it too. Let's check out the aroma on this one. So it definitely smells more oaky than the Patron Reposado. And that one was also slightly smoky. This is much more like toffee and vanilla-like. Like, much more, not as fruity. There's some earthiness to this as well. It, it does have a bit of a leathery vibe, which that one also had, which could be because of burned um, agave. And there is like a slight funny herbaceous vegetal note. I'm guessing that's the agave. It's almost like aloe vera if you've ever smelled that. I think it blue agave. I think it make aloe vera cream out of an agave plant or something. It smells pretty good. I mean, smells also like really smooth, not boozy, not like so different aromas on these compared to the swill stuff. Cheers. So definitely more edgy than Patron, more spicy, much more warming. It tastes more like what I think of when it, like the Patron had some really funny things going on, but this really screams more like tequila. It's much warmer, it's much, it has like a slightly acrid, chalky thing on the back. Really floral, really earthy, a bit of that leathery thing. It doesn't have as much caramel vanilla as the aroma indicates, but there is a touch. It's nice, but I actually think I prefer the uh, Patron. Mm -hmm. That was just much smoother and much more pleasant to drink. I mean, this is still tasty, but it's just a bit more raw and edgy. Yeah, like that herb herbal agave thing. So while the Patron was just super well balanced and, and whatnot, this is just like, yeah, it's more, I think, what people think of when they think tequila. When they're like, eh, it's a bit edgy and crazy and whatnot. Like, oh, you have to do it as shots. Um, but I think it's all right. I think it's all right. Like with the tequila, we rate with thumbs because I do not know much about this stuff. Uh, but yeah, this is all right. I'll say almost thumb up, thumb up, maybe a thumb up actually. Uh, it's, it's, it's pretty decent. It's just not like something like I really want to sit and savor. It almost tastes more like something I'd use for mixing. Whereas the Patron was more something like, yeah, I'd sit, sit and savor this as like a, a glass of, of, of whiskey or bourbon. Really peppery too, but yeah. Hey, fun. Pairing with this. Quite all right. I was actually afraid it would overshadow the beer because it's so easy going and light. It works quite all right, actually. It, it really just, this really tastes like watered down, macroified, darker lager beer. If you, like, it's got nothing near the fullness or anything like a, a, as a proper uh, amber or Vienna lager. It just, you know, it's just a weaker experience than drinking Vienna lagers from many different breweries, craft breweries, whatever, or even like, I'm guessing uh, there's probably big breweries in Germany that do great Vienna lagers. It's not the style I'm most like forayed into, but it just feels so, it has that like slightly soulless watered down feeling, uh, which is not my favorite, but I can definitely drink it. It's all right. Mm, 
Is it a pass? I think it's a small pass. 75? It's a past beer. It's not It's not failed. It's not atrocious. So yeah, if you guys had a chance to try Dos Equis Ambar Especial or uh, Tequila Reserva 1800 Reposado. Let me know what you thought of them. Thanks a ton to David for these beverages. It was fun to try them. We still got one final pairing, which will be the one I'm looking forward to the most because it's one of those macro beers that a lot of craft brewers think is great. Or at least just like a lot of people like to have. Um, so it's a Negro Modelo, which is a very famous beer, and then we pair it, we're pairing it with an Añejo Tequila, very like well aged Tequila, which will be really fun. So, yeah, looking forward to that one. But thanks a ton, David, you the man for supplying these. And as always, guys, remember to comment, subscribe to the Facebook fan page, and Twitter, and Instagram. Give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. Ring the bell for future notifications about beer videos and tequila videos. We might even be tasting some natural wine soon. It's gonna be interesting. So yeah, cheers, <laughs> and see you guys in another beer video.